I would like to first of all thank everyone for being here this evening. I know that it's you know evening activities are sometimes difficult and I appreciate we now have 64 people and we had 90 some sign up so I'm sure we're going to fill up in just a few minutes. So I would like to introduce our presenter. Dr. Bradley Leger is an educator, spiritual director, retreat facilitator, and liturgical musician based in the New Orleans, Louisiana metro area. He has been involved with LGBTQ plus ministry and professional development with various groups for a number of years. Besides his own ministries, Brad is also involved with two major US Catholic based LGBTQ ministry groups. Fortunate Families and the Marianist Social Justice Collaborative LGBTQ Plus Initiative Team. With Fortunate Families, he is a member of the Evangelization Ministry Team and the Transgender Accompaniment Ministry, walking with transgendered individuals and their families. The Marianist Social Justice Collaborative Team works toward full inclusion of the LGBTQ um, plus individuals within church and society. He is also a member of Dignity USA, New Orleans Call to Action chapter, and his local PFLAG chapter. He has experience with diversity and equity efforts in higher education and has worked with various groups and issues dealing with community, leadership, and economic development, as well as social justice. Over the years, he has been involved with international agricultural development efforts in countries of the former Soviet Union and the continent of Africa. Brad holds degrees in agricultural education from LSU and a Master of Pastoral Studies from Loyola University in New Orleans. And I would just like to take this moment because I forgot to introduce myself. I am Donna Tarney. I am the new executive director at Call to Action, and I am so pleased to be here in this um, fabulous moment, having Brad speak to us about how the Catholic Church can respond to and accompany LGBTQ individuals. So without further ado, I'm going to highlight Brad, and he is going to get us going. Thank you, Donna. It's a great pleasure to be with everybody in this sacred space. Um, I do recognize a number of faces here this evening, and I'm pleased to be able to make some new friends again tonight. And, and I'm so pleased that Call to Action is doing this program in this uh, series. And I've been a longtime member of Call to Action, having attended several national conferences and being involved in my local chapter. And it's really so gratifying to see the evolution of our organization over the years. So Donna, welcome aboard. <clears throat> so glad that you're with us. So we have so much to cover this evening, but I think it is very important that we ground ourselves in some prayer. So <clears throat> I'm gonna share this with y'all. <clears throat> so what I will do is, since there are so many of us on the call, I'll do all the talking. We ask that you just keep yourselves muted. <clears throat> and where it says all, all of you say all, you know, read it. And then you choose what side you'd like to be on, the right side or the left side. So, uh, you know, tonight is not a workshop. It's rather a sacred time of very honest reflection, um, listening, community building, and discussion, which I humbly serve as facilitator. So, Let's begin with this prayer. It's an alternate version, which you may be familiar. In order to do this, again, like the, the uh, instructions, just read along with all and whatever side you would like to join. <clears throat> Let's center ourselves. <clears throat> Lord, make me an instrument of your justice. Where there is discrimination, let me reflect equality. Where there is exploitation, exploitation let, let me yeah. show respect. Okay. Where there's prejudice, let me bring tolerance. Where there is abuse, let me affect healing. Where there's manipulation, 
let me reveal truth. Where there is violence, let me model peace. Where there is oppression, let me share freedom. O oh, Master, grant that in all things, with all people, in all situations, I may be an instrument of God's justice that unites all creation in this life and the next in the peace of Christ. <clears throat> Thank you for your participation. And before we go on, I'm sure all of you are familiar with uh, how we like to uh, handle such times of discussion. You know, of course, we all want to be respectful in the way we communicate. We're going to break up into small groups this evening in a few minutes. And so, you know, we request that you follow these guidelines, which again, I don't think anybody will have a problem with. And of course, what is said here stays here. Um, yeah, so let's just take responsibility for what we say. And what we're trying to do this evening is some deep listening to each other. You know, I'm not the expert on every part of these issues here. Um, I really recognize that there are some good experts out in the crowd tonight. And so, you know, we want to listen to each other and learn from each other and share what we can. And I will share what I can. So. I request that you do that. So why are we here? What brought us here? You know, what's the deal? There's a reason why you signed up to participate in this gathering. And I saw, thank you for your responses in the chat, you know, asking what your expectations are uh, this evening. So, you know, gleaning for what people tell me and what we ask uh, all the time, especially within this context of our faith community, you know, how do we invite and organize and facilitate crucial conversations about between members of the LGBTQ communities, allies and church leadership and laity? And how do we navigate conflicting messages from church magisterium, which can get very, very uh, frustrating? How do we walk with and, and support school and church employees? You know, whatever they're being silenced, they're being fired uh, because of who they are, who they love, or if they uh, desire to publicly support LGBTQ issues. How do we support the students? You know, and what are some good resources that we can tap into? I will share some with you this evening, uh, and I hope you'll find them useful. Again, as we all speak and, and work with our, within our small groups tonight, Hopefully there's some resources we can share. In speaking with Donna uh, before this um, gathering, you know, we were talking about hopefully within this uh, group that we can uh, work on support groups, uh, perhaps regionally or however would work best for you. So we want this to continue beyond this gathering tonight. So, you know, asked why we're here. So I guess we have to start with some bad news, the challenging news. Probably most of y'all are familiar with New Age Ministry. And uh, at the end of 2022, they conducted a poll and they asked readers of the blog, what were some of the, the best and the worst news of LGBTQ issues of 2022? They published the top 10 for the sake of time. I just are showing the top five right here. So you can see what these are. I'm not going to read them to you. Um, you know, as we can see, these for sure <laughs> definitely deal with hierarchy, correct? What they're saying it can get kind of discouraged. Not only U.S. bishops, but other bishops throughout the world. Um, and the most recent painful thing, of course, was the latest mass shooting at a, a gay nightclub, uh, which there was very little response from the bishops and they wouldn't even name LGBTQ folks. However, the untold story is that a number of bishops, and we'll talk about this later, US and globally are taking some positive steps. We just wish they more would move faster. Uh, the other insight, 
in this pattern highlights that while bishops may still take negative approaches to LGBTQ issues, um, there are many lay people who are really moving forward. But as we know within our discussion that we'll share is that you know there are some lay people as well who are very negative, who we you know see in our families, right in our communities and in the pews. So we need some prophetic voices, right? Um, I think we can agree that we're indeed in need of prophetic voices to address these issues. But my question to you is, what does it mean to you? And I, I, I invite you to put it in the chat box. What's your idea of what a prophet is? What does that mean? One or two words. What, what's a prophet to you, especially in modern day? So Don, if you wouldn't mind reading <clears throat> what pops up. So just I invite you, if you're so-called, what's a prophet? We have truth teller, a divinely mm. inspired troublemaker. Mm, someone I like who, that. Yeah, it was a good one. Someone who names truth, speaks mm. God's truth, mm. speaks for God. We have a lot of speaks truth here. I love that. Someone who sees what the future needs. Mm. Those who are willing to speak their truth, courageous. Repeaters of Jesus's words and actions. Mm. Someone who risks all, even their profession, <clears throat> inspired. Mm. Well, great. Thanks for your responses. I uh, wish we could listen to all of them. Oh, we got yeah. a couple more. Faith oh, voice, okay. hands and feet of Christ, called by ah. God to challenge the status quo. Mm. Not welcome in your own town. Mm. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, well, thank you all. Yeah, thanks for your responses here. Yeah, I, you know, there are various definitions. We definitely see a common thread here, you know, the truth telling, being courageous and such. <laughs> In my understanding, speaking prophetically means to read and understand the signs of the times and, and then to act and speak accordingly. So, you know, how can all of us on this call establish or even sharpen our skills you know, to serve in this role? Um, I like what Richard Rohr says. He, he said it this week in, in his meditations or a few couple of days ago. He said, prophets always talk about the untalkable and open a huge area of talkability. I like that. Always talk about the untalkable. You know, again, especially this issue of LGBTQ, right? It's, it's unspeakable still in, in so many circles. So for those who are willing to go there, it helps us to see what we didn't know, right? Until other people like the prophets help to see it. So that's how we begin to recognize a prophet. There's the widening of this seeing through the truth telling, through the good troublemaking, uh, deepening of truths. So thank you for your input. So let's hold on to those thoughts as we uh, continue our discussion. So again, like I said at the beginning, you know, I don't have all the answers here. I will share what I feel we need to do as far as how we create our message and then some resources. But, um, you know, number one, these issues are not going away, right? As far as, you know, a lot of church leaders or lay people or other people, even in civic life, just wish these issues would go away and they will not. I have an agricultural background, so I like the metaphor of, you know, the cows ride the barn, you're not gonna put them back in, right? So, you know, no matter how many civil laws are passed or diocesan school level policies are enacted, you know, but we know, we have to recognize that they're very complex and we need to understand that we're in it for the long game. And we're certainly not, we won't certainly be able to provide all the answers and solutions in this brief meeting Tonight, again, I know a number of you on the call uh, and, you know, you all have your own talents and gifts to share of how you approach this. So got seasoned veterans and some of you are brand new to this conversation and I'm so pleased that we're all here. So hopefully we'll be able to share our own experiences, continue building this sense of community. 
So first things first, you know, we have to build a good foundation. With any group that I speak with, tonight is call to action. So we'll use this as the model, but it, it could be, you know, faith-based group or not. If I make this kind of presentation, whatever, I always look at what the mission and core beliefs of the organization are. So again, I'll use call to action as examples tonight, but you might want to look at your own. Um, we also need to know the language and the corresponding message that we need to develop and consistently use as we go forward. So we're going to talk about that tonight. What language do we use? And along with that, a consistent and persistent message, right? So as we speak with people, you know, we, we need to be grounded uh, with what we believe in, including being Catholic, right? And we'll, I'll, I'll touch on this as well, too. You know, as Christians, what's the gospel message? And how do we stick with that? So if you're not a member of Call to Action, again, I invite you to take a look at whatever organization that you, you do belong to that does social justice. So you, we look to call to action. You know, it's to educate, inspire, and activate Catholics, right? Act for justice, to build inclusive communities uh, through anti-racism, anti-oppression. And the core beliefs, you know, people of God are called to live lives rooted in the gospel. You know, the essence of what we are. You know, I find as I get older, I'm stripping away more and more of the stuff uh, you know, that, that's not necessary. You know, what's rooted in the gospel? What's the essence of Jesus' message in this case? And that, you know, the church, people of God, that's Vatican II language, right? That we're all accountable to the creator and, and to each other. And faith communities have the responsibility to foster inclusivity and justice. This is not a country club, right? This is a group of people who love each other and love creation, and we're all part of creation. An important part, of course, in Catholic teaching is to have an informed conscience, and, and a lot of church leaders, uh, you know, are not stressing that, you know, what does that mean? And then the equality and dignity of all people, which goes along with Catholic social teaching, right? I'm a big student of, of, of Catholic social teaching, and it all boils down to this, right? the dignity of the human person. Every person is precious. So we need to consider singing this song, right? The song of Catholic social teaching. No matter group, what group we, we belong to, there are seven themes, by the way, and if you're not familiar with it, you can just Google Catholic social teaching. Here's the link that I got this quote from. Um, and the other six, again, spring forth from this. So is the heart of the gospel message. And, and there's so much to unpack, right, in this statement. So when we break up into small groups, you know, how does this inform what we're going to say and share, right? Pope Francis recently spoke to a group, you know, dealing with issues of refugees and migrants. But he did talk about educational institutions. And I know a number of people on this call are involved with schools or some kind of educational entity, education. My background, I've taught high school for a long time in a public school setting, and I was in administration as well too. But every educational institution is called to be a place of welcome to folks, you know? Protect and accompaniment, you know, to exclude no one. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And I know it's, it's a few weeks ago, but I really, like this uh, reflection by Jamie Waters, um, who is reflecting on the gospel reading in the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time right before Advent started. And, and it, there's a reason why I'm sharing this, because that hearing the gospel call to love should propel us to work in ways that address the needs of the world. We need to be creative and committed, right? Especially the word creative. Uh, a good friend of mine, a Dominican sister, uh, use this word for me, uh, which I really uh, am appreciative when we're working within situations that may be very oppressive, particularly uh, with uh, 
people in authority, hierarchy, or civic leaders. You know, we, we still, these issues are not going away, right? And, and so how can we be creative and still get the work done, right? So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. So I, I really like Jamie's uh, reflection here. So again, as we in a few minutes, we're going to break into our small groups, but I ask you to consider this. You don't need to write this down, but just um, what's swirling in your head, right? You know, what's what's been your experience in dealing with the issues? Some of you on the call are members of the community, such as I am. Some of you are parents of members of the community. Uh, some of you minister. Some of you here are just for information purposes. We're all here for different reasons. Uh, what are our loved ones, colleagues saying about these issues? You know, what's the church saying? There's some helpful stuff, but there's some very not so helpful stuff being said, right? You know, very hurtful. And then how do we educate ourselves about the issues? That's one thing we're doing tonight, right? And I hope to share some good things with you, some good resources. And it's a constant thing. I'm still learning all the time. How do we empower ourselves? How to be positive, creative? How do we self-organize? You know, What can y'all share tonight when we break up into our groups and share? And again, the notion of conscience formation, which is huge in dealing with LGBTQ issues. What about models? I'm a firm believer in not having to reinvent the wheel if we don't have to, right? What are other groups doing? How can we model our, our efforts on what, with what they're doing and how can we learn and make it our own? Uh, how to open things up for good conversation and dialogue with this encounter. Um, whatever we, you know, we present, you know, and where we find our information, it needs to be a good solid research stuff. There's so much stuff being put out there by civic and religious leaders that y'all know, you know, that are just not based on, on good research and good lived experiences of people. You know, who's the big boogeyman right now? Transgender people, right? All this legislation, for instance, uh, that's being placed against transgender people, especially our youth. You know, those are examples. You know, a lot of people who are proclaiming these things haven't even talked to a transgender person or a loved one, you know, or, or looked at good, reliable data. So anyway, and this all means that we, we will find ourselves in a place where we will have the difficult and crucial conversations, okay? Yeah, there's some other things too. So these are just things that have been swirling in my head, uh, what other people have asked me and shared with me. So again, recognizing there are a lot of experts in attendance and some very inquisitive people as well too. Uh, I invite you to share and do some deep listening and some deep sharing, okay? So Donna will place these questions in the chat feature and in a couple of minutes, we will break up into small groups. Let's see, let's say we, we have about 40, 50 minutes left. So let's break up for uh, 20 minutes. And we are going to, so Donna, if you could set that uh, breakout session for 20 minutes, please. And we're gonna be in groups of four. And I, I ask that within your group, did you elect or someone volunteer to be a facilitator, to be a timekeeper, to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak. So everyone is gonna have about five minutes uh, to speak and to, to answer these questions, or if there's something related to this, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is just kind of to kind of get the, the uh, your minds going here. You may have something, not quite this question, but still we want to kind of base it on this, okay. Uh, so anyway, how have you been inviting and organizing? How have you been doing? What, what experience did you have? Uh, and how have you been positive and creative in your own efforts? And if, you, if it's none of the above for you, if you've never done this before, uh, what questions would you have? Or what good or bad experiences have you had that could add to the discussion? Okay. So, 
So what we'll do is when we come back, we'll have a few minutes. Uh, we'll call on a couple of groups. Uh, we won't, you know, we're a very large group. So Don, if you don't mind, we'll find a couple of groups that would be facilitated to report on the major themes that bubbled up. And then also we'll have that time as well to uh, for any general questions that people have, and we'll ask you to put that in the chat box. Okay, so do we understand our assignment? So do okay. we have the questions? Do we have the questions in the chat box? I will do that as soon as I put you. What, what's going to happen next is you will receive an invitation to join a room and just click join. And once everybody is in the room, I will paste the questions so that everybody in your chat rooms can see them. And then when we come back, um, besides sharing with one another the answers to some of the questions or what's bubbling up or big themes, um, Brad is also going to give us some resources, some ideas. So we're just gonna have you talk first. This is an educational model where we find out what you know and what you want to know, and then we come back and address all of that as well. So I'm gonna create the rooms now, just accept the invitation, and I will then post the questions into the chat box for each room. I will see you later. Okay, now I'm going to broadcast those questions and pause the. There we go. So now for, for about the next 10 minutes. I would just like to, I'm going to randomly think of a number, and if you are in that room, would someone just share with us a word, a phrase, one thought that stood out, one thing that was most important in your discussions, doesn't have to be complete, um, it can just, it can just be a glimpse and insight into what y'all talked about, so how about room seven? Somebody from room seven, unmute yourself and share. I think I'm in room seven. If I'm not, forgive me. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm from uh, Frederick, Maryland. We're in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Part of what we talked about is what I would describe as the implicit endorsement of Archbishop Lori over the last 11 years of an LGBTQ plus group in uh, mm -hmm. Baltimore at St. Matthew's Parish under the direction of Father Joe Muth, M-U-T-H. Um, but it's been a matter of silence from the Archbishop because this has not mm -hmm. been done openly. So that's that's one matter that I just leave there because it continues despite Joe Muth's retirement and his replacement being acknowledged as a liaison between the archdiocese and those parishes in the archdiocese that have LGBTQ plus ministries. The second thing I would say is uh, that we talked about is Christian churches outside of the Catholic Church follow the mission of Jesus to embrace all. One of them that you may want to explore is Middle Collegiate Church in New York City. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, how about if we hear from room 18? Or if you don't remember what room you were in. I, I think that's our room, but I, okay, wanted, to, perfect. I wanted to uh, relay this to Steve because he talked about the Bishop, I think Stowe from Kentucky. And I think that's a good example for him to share with us. Okay, Steve. Sure. Uh, so we had talked about, uh, well, one thing that came up in our discussions was uh, there's a big difference between what bishop you have in your diocese and, and how uh, 
much freedom to operate LGBT groups may have um, has a big difference on how the priests behave, what they will let you do. Um, I talked about Bishop Stowe being very uh, open and supportive of the LGBT community, um, you know, and always being very inclusive in any of his homilies or public speaking, but that at the same time, we don't always have uh, as, as open uh, or as direct a mandate maybe um, for LGBT inclusion. Uh, I'm a deacon in the diocese and that's one of the complaints that other deacons have said is, is almost that he doesn't go far enough, you know, to completely give a green light to, to really push for total LGBTQ inclusion, you know. Um, and so that has been a, a criticism that we, we've had here in the diocese is, you know, he does a lot, but maybe it's not always enough, you know, or he doesn't ever say anything that will get him in trouble per se, you know, but he has to still be careful himself, it seems sometimes, which even what he says, even as the bishop, you know, maybe he, he doesn't go as far as we would like, even though he's the most open and understanding and accepting bishop that I've come across or had the, the honored or pleasure to, to serve under, but, you know, it, it is it is hard even for them. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. How about someone from group 10. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, this is Linda. And I'm just going to share and speak up a little bit, but someone else can certainly add to whatever. But um, one of the things that I really would like to see focused on more and more is incarnation because incarnation is more than just you know we hear the phrase walk a mile in my shoes that you know no God walks in everybody's skin you know God is in flesh in every human person the depth of our humanity God knows what it's like to be each one of us, each person. So if, if our church could just, uh, you know, let us share that, share that message with us to the point that we would really start to grasp it and honor it. And we'd be so amazed and awed to listen to you know, other people's stories and their humanness and their humanity I mean, how could we not just celebrate or honor every person for their joys, their sorrows, whatever, their struggles? But that is God in the flesh. And one of the group members used the word infused. When we come to recognize God is infused within us, that just changes everything, changes the way we look at everything, you know. So that's one of my takeaways anyway that I offer. Thank you so much. That's that's very powerful image. The incarnation in God is with each of us in fleshed. I love that. Somebody else. I'm not going to call room numbers anymore. Just if you mm -hmm. want to say something, unmute yourself and share Wait a minute. with us. Yeah, I Thank would you. like to say about the uh, synodality, I think is such an important opportunity whether it's embraced in the diocese where we are or if we have to do more grassroots that we really engage in that process. And I think it'll be especially important uh, between this October, 2023, and when the bishops uh, reconvene in Rome for 2024, that we are openly uh, endorsing synodality and try to bring that fruition no matter where we are in the country. Thank you. We have time for a couple more people. One of the things I, this is Tom Keep. one of the things I'd like to say briefly about our group is that we talked about not hiding. We talked about being present and we talked about our presence as our voice. And we have a presence in Los Angeles with the Catholic ministry with lesbian and gay persons. And we um, we show up and, and we proudly profess our faith and don't hide the fact that we're lesbian, gay, transgender, 
or parents, allies of, of them. And, um, you know, uh, we, we profess our baptism, our baptismal right. And it's a real blessing to be able to do that. I Thank think we you. need to show up and we need to be present. Here in Thank Maine, you, um, yeah. here in Maine, we we did. Uh, there's a group of us that meet monthly on Zoom, and it's a mixture of LGBTQ community and people related to to our friends of. And what we finally did was that when the gay rights parade was up in Bangor, um, people attended that and they stood behind a banner that didn't say my parish or my church, but it just said we Catholics support LGBTQ community, and um, it's a nice way to kind of like step out there and they were um sad sad I even have to say this but there was no repercussions from us doing that using the word Catholic oh. so that was good yeah that's that's definitely good I was just going to ask how was that received so thank you for filling that in okay I believe one of the things that we need to do as Catholics is to kind of change our mindset as to who defines whether we are Catholic or not and who defines whether we walk into a church or not. I think uh, many times we sit back and kind of wring our hands saying, but that priest won't let me, but that pastor won't let me, but that bishop won't let me. When that's not empowerment even to ourselves. So how are we going to empower anybody else? Um, how many know of Nativity School in Worcester? Okay, Nativity School, they were told by their bishop that they could not have anything that dealt with Black Lives Matter. They could not have the um, rainbow flag up. They, they could no longer call themselves Catholic. Yes. They could not be a Catholic school. They're still standing. They are pushing back. And I think there's a need to know that with love, we need to tell some of our brothers and sisters in the church, especially in the hierarchy, we love you, but you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rosa. I see Tyson. You have unmuted yourself. After Thank Tyson, you. we're going to turn it back over to Brad, and then yeah. we'll have time at the end for more questions. So go ahead, I, Tyson. Yeah, I just wanted to say I was inspired by, you know, what the participants have been saying, especially Tom and Linda. Tom encouraging people to be their authentic selves, to show up, to be visible. And Linda talking about the God within all of us. We can connect with any human being because God exists within all of us. And it's an all hands on deck approach to preach the good news of the Lord and to bring people to the religion. And that's what evangelization is about. But you can't evangelize if you're, you're focused on being divisive and biased because that will not work. And that's not God's way. And our connection to God is through love. So I'm just inspired by what people are saying. And I'm in New York City. Uh, we work with Cardinal Dolan. I'm in Harlem at St. Charles Borromeo Church, and the leadership within our church is supportive of inclusion. And, and that's really where the love is. How do we love someone who may be different from us and really connect with the God within them? And that really should be the order of the day. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Brad because he has a few more things. But uh, after that, we'll have more time for Q&A and discussion as well. So. Sure. Thank you for all the sharing and, you know, some of the, the, the messages that I'm hearing uh, and I, firstly, I see people in the chat box or sharing resources, books, et cetera, which is really important. Um, you know, it was brought up, you know, Rosa talked about what defines what is Catholic. You know, we talked about conscience. We talked about the group that I jumped into, uh, Bill and Nancy were very nice to me. They talk about evangelization. You know, Bill was saying that in his archdiocese. How can we as groups, as we continue this conversation, unpack all of that? And what does that mean to evangelize? What does it mean to be Catholic? And we, we carry that message with us as we move forward. If we say we're Catholic, what does that mean? Does it mean we're inclusive? You know, if we're, if we're marching toward authenticity, what does that mean? And so we, you know, that's the part of this authentic message that we're talking about. We're talking about support each other, you know, supporting each other. We're talking about being present, right? And, and so these are all the things that we do uh, to carry our message forward, okay? So thank you so much for uh, this sharing. So let me see um, 
because of our time running away from us. I wish we had more time, but uh, I'm very willing again to meet with y'all um, in the future if you want to continue this conversation. So again, um, I know we're running short of time. Um, any other questions you may have while we're going, if you don't mind, just put them in the chat box and Donna, please feel free to interrupt me if uh, there's any burning questions people have. Or the last slide does have my email address. If you have questions, if you have things you'd like to share, please feel free uh, to do that, okay? So again, one of the big messages that I'm, I'm, I'd like to leave with y'all this evening is to be persistent, just be persistent, you know, as we move forward. And, and that's gonna look different for each kind of group. Everybody communicates differently, everybody has different resources, but how can we just stick with it? Keeping that conversation going. It may be through a book club. It may be just striking up conversations. Um, however it takes to get that conversation going and to go with that consistent message again. So if we say we're with call to action, what's our message? Uh, I, I use an example. I've done a lot of work with social workers in our state of Louisiana, and they're very intentional in being inclusive in the work that they do. So, you know, we'll talk about that. If your mission says that you will serve us all, that means we will serve us all, right? And then just like in Catholic social teaching, if we say every human being has that inherent dignity, that's the message we need to say as Catholics, right? And, and, and everything arises uh, from that, all right? And use that. So some examples of being consistent and persistent there are some good things that have been happening uh, worldwide. And y'all probably know Germany's bishops, a number of them, and a lot of laity are really moving forward uh, to want to ask the question, right? And to move forward. Somebody brought up the synodality uh, you know, process. Uh, the term LGBTQ is being used, right? And we hope that that conversation will move forward. If y'all are familiar with UA's ministry, Sister Janine Gramick, you know, they tried to silence her years ago, right? You know, the CDF and the Vatican tried to silence her. They did not. And what happened recently, the Pope thanked her for her work. Imagine that, right? And the, her work is in the style of God, you know? Uh, with what the, the bishops and, you know, the Flemish bishops <coughs> in Belgium are doing. Uh, you know, issues like the death penalty, let's say, Sister Helen Prejean, who's, you know, and also Louisiana native, you know, she's been working so hard pushing to change the death penalty. Well, Catechism of the Catholic Church changed, right? Because of all such efforts. So these are examples of persistent and consistent messaging. Uh, and again, in the Senate, right? I know one remarkable thing we saw in our archdiocesan newspaper here is that the, the, the uh, acronym LGBTQ was used. It was never before used. <clears throat> so I know that gives me hope. I hope it gives all the rest of us hope that things can move forward. Okay, so I, I promised that I would provide some resources. Uh, Donna said that she would share them with all of you. There are several links. These are just a few. Again, through <clears throat> your conversations with each other, y'all could probably come up with a whole lot more. I have a lot I could share, a whole lot more. Again, if you contact me with my email, I'd be very happy to share with you. A really good, very basic thing. You know, like I said earlier, when we, when we share things, it needs to be good research-based, good valid information. The Family Acceptance Project is through San Francisco State University. Some of you may be familiar with it. It is research-based quantitative and qualitative research, which talks about best practices for families in working together uh, and in supporting the LGBTQ uh, family members. Very, very good, good stuff. The website has posters that you could download for free. You just have to print them yourself that shows the best practices. They're also doing specific material specific to working with different cultures like the Hispanic culture and also um, 
the Mormon, they have a track, the Mormons, they, they're working on Catholic. So, you know, they're trying to do some really good relevant stuff. A brand new publication by New Ways Ministry. It's again, it's using Catholic social teaching, tying that in as far as calling for non LGBTQ non discrimination. Again, uh, these are actual links, and Donna said she would share them with you. Um, probably some of you have that resource already. And look, call to action, right? Call to Action has some great resources also, does wonderful work with LGBT justice. Uh, there's some great commentaries. There's good liturgies that have been developed by staff, which I've taken part in. <clears throat> some good opportunities for community building. So if you're not familiar with Call to Action, you know, there it is. I, uh, in my introduction, we talked about my involvement with the Marinus Social Justice Collaborative. I think there's some people on this call who are familiar with it. Uh, we have some great resources um, out there. And I go to the website again. <clears throat> Several years ago, we put out a publication uh, for schools to use. It was created for the Marinus sponsored school, but anybody could use it. It's on the web. You can download it yourself. A couple of years ago, we did. Uh, do a video, which we're very proud of, uh, Living on Marinus Charism, Embracing the LGBTQ Community. Uh, I think there's at least one person on this call who is in that video. Uh, and then there's subtitles as well, and there are resource guides. We also do uh, uh, ret weekend retreats. We had one in the St. Louis area this past November. We plan on doing some more in the future. We also have other educational um, opportunities. I'm also involved with Fortune Families. Again, there are some folks on the call that are involved with the program with Fortune Families. Lots of good resources out there. Um, it, it's, it's greatly expanded over the years what we offer. But again, we've just redone the website as well. And we're trying to keep it fresh. We have tons of resources, books, videos. You can make individual contact. Let's say you want to uh, visit with parents of uh, other LGBTQ folks for support. We can do that as well. One of the newer uh, things that we're doing, and it was in my bio also, is that uh, we do ministry of accompaniment with transgender people and, uh, and their families. And I'm in that cohort. So you could contact Fortune Families uh, if you want information on that. We'll work with people in whatever part of the journey that they are. And y'all might be familiar with the work of Father Jim Martin. Yes. Uh, with the Jesuits. Uh, they've had a couple of outreach conferences at Fordham in New York, talking about LGBTQ ministry. Uh, they do have a website. You can sign up for the uh, weekly newsletters, their reflections, their articles, a lot of good resources out there. It's outreach.faith. Uh, really, really good stuff. So that's my contact information here. I'm in Marrero, which is across the river uh, from New Orleans. And that's my email contact information that, uh, again, please feel free to write it down. Contact me. Donna will share that as well. So we have like three minutes left. Um, any questions or comments, whatever, before we leave? You can you can just say it out loud, just jump in. Well, I might say, Mr. Leger Cher. Yes, nice Cher, you, 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 you got to be from Louisiana. I'm from Lafayette, and I'm with LSU go. in New Orleans. It's nice to know that they're doing great work on the West Bank, but now I live in New York City. Well, I'm from Acadia Parish originally, so... Uh, oh, I'm, Mr. Cher, yeah. Je suis cadien, OS. Ah, je suis créé, mais moi, je suis pas français aussi. Moi aussi. Bienvenue. Bienvenue. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Yes. So, from Maryland, I will say it's a battle within our Catholic Church, and it's easy to give up and go away because there are other Christian churches that are so welcoming 
to the people we have talked about tonight. But if we can turn the tide, the ability of the Catholic Church throughout the globe to turn in favor of women and all people, LGBTQ+, could positively impact the world as Jesus intended. Thank you, John. My name is Marion Durkin, and if anybody in your diocese knows anything about the Culture Project, the Culture Project, we have that in Cleveland, and I don't know much about it, but it all concerns me already. I've only seen a picture of the young people that are the Culture Project. So if you know anything about it, if you would just maybe put something in the text in the chat to me, I could get in touch with you perhaps. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Is that a, a countrywide thing or is it only in your area? Don't know. Okay. She's moving. It, it sounded like it was a national group. They've been here before. It's young people whose um, emphasis with young, they go around and talk to young people in various places and schools and everything. And I think their emphasis is on, um, it's, it's on love and living, I think, chastely. But my concern is um, mm. there's just some, there's an undercurrent in some of their, some of the stuff said about mm. them. And I wonder. It's, uh, it started by Archbishop Chapu in Philadelphia. It then uh, migrated to Los Angeles, where it's had a very concerning present. You're right about its analysis. It is, has a very uh, definitive slant, and it's sort of a culture warrior approach to faith. Um, and I've had some conversations like at conferences where they had a table with some of their um, sort of their missionaries, shall we say, yeah. and very narrow perspective about faith, about the breadth of uh, what our church teaches. And you have every right to be concerned about them. Yes. Mm. And in the pictures, this is the second group has come. There's not, it's all beautiful white Caucasian kids. Right, right. It's, it's right. sort of like a lot of these apostolates around the country that come out of whether it's focus or, you know, these missionaries, net ministries, um, all have a very definitive slant to them and they're apostolates funded basically by a lot of big money interest too. So it's a very concerning. And I would just like to mention too, there's a good book coming out um, mid-March. Um, there's some reviews on it already. It's called Playing God. And it sort of goes into some of the money trails that these influential bishops have in the, in the country and their alliances with the um, different uh, people, shall we say. And I really highly recommend that you look at that and you can pre-order it now and uh, get that on your reading list and share what's in that with people. It's important that people know this, what's going on. Who's the well, what Donna just put in the chat is important. There's intersectionality in so many issues um, and Christian nationalism is something that is entering everywhere, yes. everywhere. Absolutely. And if we pay attention, we will find out things like there's an intersectionality between sexism and homophobia. Wherever you see that women are not welcome in any kind of a management position, or authority, you will find there's homophobia too. It just happens. Um, I would also like to share with everyone, I personally will even look at things like Netflix for documentaries, for shows, just to at least understand the whole culture because I don't understand the whole culture. And, at, and, and right now, actually, I'm looking at something called We're Here, which sounds like, why do I want to look at a program about drag queens? Well, it's interesting. It's very fascinating. There's a lot to learn there. We're here on HBO Max. Did see that. Found it very interesting and well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very important point that Rosa brings up about just being open to learning. That's how we evolve as human beings. 
we as human beings have biases and our biases divide us and make us judge people and develop stigmas about them. And it closes people off to us. And if we understand our biases and figure out how to dismantle that, then we can learn to be more inclusive and learning about other people, being open to learning about people who might be different can be very helpful to us in our mission to be more inclusive. So thanks for sharing about We Are Here, uh, Rosa. I have heard about it and I'm definitely gonna be checking that one out. Well, I'm going to sound like I'm preaching here, but, um, you know, Jesus said, if I silence these, the stones will cry out and the stones are crying out. Um, how many women, I cannot believe the number of women that have been ordained somehow they've been ordained and, uh, and that's going to continue. And, uh, I would share with my group that I almost feel like it's don't ask, don't tell. As long as the priest isn't preaching against it, you know, fine. Uh, because, and keep showing up. The gentleman that said something about show up and be present and be visible because the stones are crying out. And I don't know what's going to happen to the church. And I almost don't care what happens to the institution. I, God forgive me. I just, I care about the people that I worship with, uh, that I love, but uh, something's different going to happen. And I was at an or a CTA event where the, it was a woman's mass, and all of a sudden, all these women opened their purses, took out their stoles. It was all priests. I maybe I was the only one that wasn't there. It was wonderful, and that's going on. Other things are happening. People just need to to come out and cry out, let it be known. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Let me just share a little bit of, of good news, I think, uh, maybe to end this evening. Here in Baltimore, Maryland, we had uh, Father Brian Massingale oh, as mm -hmm. a speaker at Loyola University here in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And he began speaking to the group tonight as he said, I come to you as an African-American priest of the Catholic Church who is openly gay and so proud to share that with you. And then he began to talk a little bit about what his journey's been like when he had to tell his mom and dad that he felt that he was different than other boys. And so a very powerful speech. Uh, you can put Father Brian Massingale down as one of our LGBT heroes for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Father Massingale is at St. Charles Borromeo one Sunday out of the month and he's at Dunwoody uh, up here in the Yonkers section of New York. Wonderful. Yeah. He's excellent. Amen. Excellent. Um, can you hear me? I just wanted to say two things about Massengale and Bishop Stowe. We've had them both speak on our campus here at St. Norbert College in De Pere, and they were wonderful. And it was an open thing for everybody in the community, not just Catholics. So our hierarchy and our leadership didn't really look that well upon it, but the rest of us loved it. So they are a tremendous resource. And thank you for you have, all the resources people said tonight. Appreciate it. And you have Craig Ford with you over there. Oh, he's the leader of our group, uh, SNC Out Loud. We're having a big meeting next week. I don't want to say this, but we kind of have to prove our worthiness to the parish because uh, it's affiliated with this old St. Joe's parish. But with Craig's leadership and Alex and uh, I saw Linda on the line tonight, we're going. We're just keeping going, and we're going to say we are worthy to be part of this parish. He's amazing. Yeah, I'll, it's a, yeah. I'll, I'll re, I I highly recommend people googling Dr. Craig Ford. Yeah, he is um, amazing. He's up there with Brian Massengale. He's younger. Mm -hmm. uh, he's up and coming. Theolo wonderful intersection of race, mm -hmm. gender, Catholic, you know, Dr. Yeah, wonderful. You know, there are 73 of us here tonight. If each one of us just keeps showing up and keep up the fight, we can change yep. the world. We can. Yep. Good yes. luck. No, there's no luck involved. There is no <laughs> luck involved. There is there is work, there is commitment, there is dedication, there is forward movement, and there is the Holy Spirit. So none of that is luck. All of that is intentionality. And if we are intentionally inclusive and intentionally provide space for the voices that need to be heard those voices will begin to change the, the the circumstances the people around them it is all about intentionality and never giving up so and somebody put in there that the church is over 2,000 years old and it won't go away but we're not trying to erase the institutional church we're trying to make change 
And if the change doesn't happen in the building, the change is going to happen in the streets. And right. that's what that's where we are mm -hmm. anyway. So um, that and that maybe one question is, are we ready to be prophets? Uh, there you go. We, we have to be and we have to be intentional as as it's been yep. stated. It's the intentionality of the Holy Spirit. And we have yep. all that that moves us. Well, it, all, it also strikes me that you know we're sometimes called followers of Christ, but one doesn't speak of following somebody who's sitting still. Jesus was not <laughs> a big fan of the status quo, you know. So if we want to follow, we got to be willing to go where He's leading us. Yeah, bingo. I would, I would encourage everybody to consider doing two things that really aren't hard. One is getting a group of people together and walking a pride parade. Oh, yeah. Straight the fact that you're Catholics. We've been walking uh, mm -hmm. in the Cincinnati Pride Parade behind a banner saying Catholics embracing all God's people. Mm -hmm. And it is just amazing the responses that we get from the people in, in the crowd. Uh, you know, does your bishop know you're here? Well, we really don't care. But right. okay. and also get a booth at a Pride Festival. Uh, oh, yeah, done that. You know, the, 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 the people just so much appreciate the fact that we're there. And we care. Thank you. I would also encourage consider going to creating change. It is a conference that's held once a year nationally. It's the biggest LGBTQ plus conference in the United States. Go there with an open mind, with an open heart, and maybe just listening and learning. There's a lot to learn there about the LGBTQ plus culture. When you spoke about we're not going away, we aren't going away, but the thing that always bothers me is as I look at all you beautiful people here today, I think we're all 50 and maybe above. And like what we're finding on the campus here in Green Bay is that the LGBT community is not going away. They're not going back in the closet. None of that is happening. But we also have a faction of really young students who are ultra conservative. So that's something that um, I think is going to be a challenge to in the future. I would 100% agree with you. That is then that is happening everywhere mm -hmm. in in many, many spaces. Uh, many divisions are becoming solidified and the gap is widening between people, which is why relationships and knowing mm -hmm. of the other is yeah. the most important thing that we mm -hmm. can do. Um, so if you want to continue this conversation and, and bring ideas to the table and form groups in your area or join groups in your area that are already working on this, I am going to send out an email tomorrow. I put this in the chat, but it's going to have the websites mentioned, everything from the chat. I'm just going to put in one, one big email and, and send it out to all of you. And along with that will be a request if you would like to be made aware of groups in your area that are working on this issue. Um, there are groups uh, from CTA. We have what's called an alternatives working group, people who have alternative lifestyles to what the world has, no, what the Western world has called the norm because plenty of indigenous cultures recognize gender fluidity. So not even gonna say that it's everybody. Um, so, and there are also other groups in your area that you can become connected with. So look for that email tomorrow. It will also include a link to this recording. So you can go back and watch it again. Uh, it'll have contact information for uh, Brad Leger and the other people who have uh, mentioned resources on during our time together. I would just like to thank everyone for being here, especially our New Orleans folks who brought us Brad and his wonderful topic. And again, if, and, and I'll ask this question in the email, if you liked this topic, you know, what would you like to hear more about? Because we can, we can do these all day long. Well, not all day long, all year long. Um, so that, so that we all have the tools we need to, to create meaningful change in our communities um, and in our families sometimes. So mm -hmm. that's, sometimes that's the toughest one, but mm -hmm. we got it. Thank you all so, for your kind attention, your participation and sharing information. This has been such a privilege to be with you. So I hope to see you again and again, if I may be a service to you, let me know. And bonsoir, Monsieur Boudreau. Bonsoir. Bonsoir.
Bonsoir, Monsieur Léger. À la prochaine. Soyez-vous autres. Okay. Good night.